A hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and use AWS EKS CloudWatch Container Insights, okay? So as you know, AWS right now provides an extensive capability at AWS CloudWatch where we can have the you know, insights on our container workloads. So especially in this video, I'm gonna focus on AWS EKS service, okay? So as you see in this picture, this is just a pictorial overview of my demo. And as usual, you know, in, in my normal videos, I'm gonna explain you the, you know, demo in a two parts, especially one is in the first part, I'm gonna explain you like, how does the, you know, flow works generally. And then in the second part, I'm gonna explain you like, you know, how do we really, you know, at, at hands on how we can configure that. And also parallelly show you the demo, you know, how does that, that you know, the setup works in, in, in the last part of my demo as well, yeah. So before I start with the first part and the second part, yeah. A kind request please to subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot yeah so with that note let's directly jump to this demo first one so as i explained the container insert okay the consider container insights are generally kind of you know logs and metrics that are being you know uh, retrieved or fetched from the aws eks cluster to the aws cloud watch okay where you know where uh, where you know cloud watch uh, capability provides you a kind of a, you know feature or kind of a you know capability you know the way you can you know view the you know uh, view the aws eks container workload especially the container workloads performance can be viewed at container insights okay so basically the flow is something like this in this video first of all we're gonna create an amazon eks cluster with using ekctl utility i'm not using any infrastructure as a code but yeah just a, a command line utility which is given from the aws and especially for eks cluster that is you know using ekctl utility okay so i'm gonna show you like how you can set up an example Amazon EKS cluster with using EKSCTL utility. Then on top of this EKS cluster, we host an example application on the EKS cluster so that it can generate the required metrics, logs, and performance, which can be used at you know used at the container insights level. Yeah. All right. So again, so once you have the hosted the logs, then parallelly we gonna configure. AWS CloudWatch Insight configurations in the sense whatever the configurations are required on the EKS cluster so that it can forward the logs to the AWS CloudWatch and especially in the container insights you know feature of the AWS CloudWatch yeah so as I as this picture represents generally you know the generally you know we will be using Fluent D uh, which will fetch the data from the AWS EKS cluster especially metrics and logs and it will push it those you know those uh, metrics and logs to the AWS uh, you know CloudWatch, yeah, which is nothing but you know kind of a, a metric uh, and and the logs analyzing tool, yeah, nothing but you know where all the logs, metrics can be, you know, can be pushed under the uh, service, okay, so that kind of uh, service is CloudWatch, yeah. All right, so then for in the CloudWatch we have a feature called you know CloudWatch Container Insights, okay, so where where you know that feature provides you a kind of a customized uh, you know dashboard views where we, you can see the performance of your, of your AWS EKS workload, which is an example EKS application that we are going to create on Amazon EKS service, okay? So at the, that's the reason, you know, the flow is something like this, okay? First one, we will create an EKS cluster, then we will host the workload, that is an example application, then we configure the CloudWatch fetching services, generally Fluentd and the other configurations, which will, you know, fetch the data, which will, you know, which will push the data from, um, from this Amazon EKS, which will just, you know, which will get the data from Amazon EKS uh, service, then pushes those data directly to the AWS CloudWatch. And in the AWS CloudWatch, we're gonna use, uh, you know, container insights and the container insights, you know, where we can see the graphs, log groups, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna show you like, you know, all right. So that is how the, it works. Now let's directly jump to the, you know, second part of the, you know, my video, yeah. So what is that actually? So um, to save the time, okay, what did I do is, I have already, you know, I'm, I have already, you know, set up the EKS cluster because the creation of EKS cluster takes, you know, 15 minutes, okay? So for that case, and I have already created, uh, pre-created an EKS cluster and it does not contain any workload, okay? I'm gonna show you everything from the scratch now, right now. So for this case, I'm using Windows PowerShell because I have the Windows machine, so that's the reason I'm using Windows PowerShell to run my all AWS CLI, EKCTL commands, and uh, kubectl commands and help commands, okay? So in this video, we're gonna run these four types of commands generally, yeah? So that's the reason here the prerequisite is you should have your system installed with the EKCTL, AWS CLI, Helm, yeah, and kubectl as well, okay? So this becomes a prerequisite, all right? So once you have the system installed with your EKC, uh, AWS CLI, maybe you can run this command called 
AWS configure. What does this AWS configure does? It actually sets the context of your AWS account with using the access key ID, access secret, yeah? And finally, you are setting a default reason, nothing but in which reason you want to do these operations, okay? That is what the, so I'm choosing AP, AP hyphen South hyphen one, yeah? That is Mumbai region. And then I'm gonna set the default format, you know, for output format, that is JSON, yeah? Finally, evaluating whether my context is set or not with using this command that is AWS STS get caller identity, okay? So if it returns something, which indicates that, you know, you have successfully configured your, you know, context. And basically you need to do one more thing is this user, okay? So whatever the user you are using to log into the AWS account with using programmatic access, okay? So this is nothing but, you know, you are taking the programmatic access to your account. So this role, this user should have a access like administrative access, okay? All right, so that is a prerequisite. And finally, what I did is, as I said, I have the EKCTL utility being installed in my system. And that's the reason I'm using the EKCTL utility and creating the EKS cluster. If you are not installed EKCTL in your Windows system or in your any system, please do watch my previous video where I have explained like how we can configure the EKCTL utility in the Windows system especially, yeah? All right, the command let here, which I used is EKCTL create cluster. Then I have given my cluster name called EKS insights, then the node type is t2.large and node one, yeah? And the minimum node and the maximum node, that is nothing but, you know, kind of a scale set, okay? That is auto scale configurations I am giving is one to two, that's all. And then the reason is setting as AP South one. Then the zones I'm selecting is A, B and C, yeah? All right, so once I run this command, it has taken me almost like 15 seconds, okay? If you start from here, so it has started at 22, 55, 22, 25, and then end at, right, at 41, which is almost like 15 minutes, okay? And finally, once you see this message saying like, you know, is ready, which means that your EKS cluster is ready. I'll show you. So if I go to my AWS account, so this is my AWS account, yeah? And if I refresh it, so this is my EKS cluster, EKS insight, okay? And you see the status is active. And if I can show you the further properties, so these are the details in the, in the resource, yeah? Then if I go to the compute, you see we have a node group. Then networking, these are my networking con configurations, add-ons, authentications, login, update history, tags, okay? So these are the kind of, you know, um, metadata or the information about your EKS cluster, yeah? All right, let's go to the next step. So as usual, when I deal with the, or when I do any demo with the AWS EKS workloads or AWS EKS cluster level configurations, then I do, you know, all I do write all the commandlets that you need to run one after the other in the form of a JSON file. And also I have another file called enable container insight. Okay, so this is the you know container specification file, which is nothing but YAML format file. If you run this file, you know, you will enable the required configurations at your AWS EKS cluster. Okay, this is the file which is responsible for configuring the your FluentD configuring the, you know, uh, fetching the logs from your EKS cluster, then forwarding the logs to the AWS CloudWatch log groups and the you know, container insights as well, okay? So that's all specifications are being mentioned in this, you know, container specification file, okay? Anyways, I will share these both files in my GitHub repo and the GitHub repo link will be shared in the, my videos description. You can find these two files from there. Okay, as I explained previously, like, you know, these are the prerequisite, okay? One is the, you know, AWS CLI, then you have the security to install the prerequisite like kubectl, uh, you know, aggressivity is not required. So maybe I can call it as a kubectl, okay? So we, you need kubectl, okay? You need kubectl, then you need to have Helm as well, okay? So if you are not aware of how to configure the Helm, please do watch my, you know, previous video where I have dedicatedly created a video to like how you can install the Helm on the Windows system, okay? All right, then the next one, let's go to the next uh, part of my, this command file. So this is all about you know, setting your EKS cluster, okay? So create AWS EKS cluster. Till now I have run the first command. So the next command is, you know, you can get the status of your EKS cluster. How do you do that? You can do that by running this command next to your, uh, you know, next to your the space, okay? So let me run this command. All right, so I have not copied it. So let me copy again and check the status of the EKS cluster through the you know, command line. Anyways, I have shown you uh, from the um, uh, from the uh, AWS console, maybe you can see it again here uh, by running the command ekctl get cluster status, okay? So AWS get cluster, so where you can see the status equal to active, all right? 
and that's about the you know getting and knowing about your eks cluster okay so right now it is in a good shape and finally you know it's a delete operation it's it's a dead end you know it's like an end command that you can run um uh, to run you know uh, maybe um, yeah uh, this is the command that you can run to clean up your eks cluster at the end okay but before that let's start with our demo okay so so first command let's see okay how many you know if if any parts are running in this eks cluster first of all then what is the command that i'm using kubectl get pod hyphen hyphen all namespaces what does this mean in the sense we are telling the kubectl which is nothing but you know which will interact your api server that is aws eks api server and fetches the all the parts running in the across the eks cluster okay that's the reason it's called as all namespaces as of now only the system oriented uh, you know uh, parts are been running and running in a namespace like cube hyphen system okay which is a reserved namespace in the eks cluster all right now let's go to the next command okay uh, the next command is okay in my demo the next command which i'm targeting is to install an application here i'm going to install you know normal wordpress you know wordpress um, application okay which is nothing but a blogging application in general okay so it's just a wordpress uh, application okay so now let's do that before i do that what i need to do is i need to run this command that is a wordpress um, uh, ciw okay so let me run this command to create uh, the you know the required workspace for us okay what i'm doing to use this workspace in the sense this workspace i'm going to leverage um, um, you know um, uh, to create the workspace uh, uh, wordpress application okay so let me pronounce it right away so this is wordpress okay all right so right now we have created a namespace as you see here the namespace has been created the next one is is the you know next one is the direct to the point command okay so this command what does actually does is you know it will download uh, the the application helm charts from the internet and it will you know fork into in your local repository okay so helm maintains a local repository when you are using the helm command okay and that's the reason we are using helm repo at bitnami so this is the bitnami is you know, kind of a provider for this wordpress yeah so i'm just using this one yeah so you see it's already exists okay so nothing but you know i'm forking this you know um, this particular chart to my local with this command which is already been done okay and the next command is to you know deploy our wordpress uh, application so with using the helm command okay so helm is like a kind of a, you know a very uh, quick and very efficient way of you know running your kubectl command okay under the hood helm is nothing but in a kind of a wrapper command underneath you know you are invoking a batch of or you know multiple eks kubectl commands that's what i can tell in general okay all right so uh, helm okay so i'm i'm invoking helm hyphen namespace this is my namespace i'm telling to install my you know wordpress application so let me run this command and within no time we should see you know this this application getting installed or or you know hosted on our aws eks cluster and then once this is successful we can access our wordpress application okay all right so it looks like it has successfully installed okay so you see it has created deployed the status is deployed and finally it is telling that the username is the is the username and the password you can retrieve it from here in the form of base64 you know encoded all right pretty much uh, done with the installation let's uh, check the status of our application okay so once the application is success then only we can be uh, you know we can be accessing the the applications okay so let me so what is the thing that i'm going to show you here is currently you know we are checking what happened to that application deployment okay so deployment is quickly initiated and it came out of the loop okay but actually the application installation or you know uh, the pod deployment okay so the pod deployment is taking certain time in general okay so as you see here currently it is monitoring what happened to that pod deployment or a, a deployment yeah so currently it is monitoring that you know it is it is in progress okay all right so let's wait for that to go in a success set then we can access the you know wordpress application which is deployed to on this eks cluster then once your workload has been hosted then comes the the next operation okay how do i need to get the insight about you know my workloads sitting on my eks cluster for example you know how much the memory has been used how much cpu has been used okay how much the disk part has been used yeah and also what is the you know how does my application you know working by referring the logs okay so that is where you know uh, the cloud watch uh, insights comes very handy okay and that is where my video is is you know dedicated for you know, for for this use case okay nothing but you know how do we get that insight about your workloads which is hosted on eks cluster yeah 
already. You see the deployment is rolled out in the sense it's successfully deployed, yeah? And nothing but you know, our application is up and running fine. Now, um, what do we can do? So now we can check, you know, what happened, um, um, what happened to the pod, okay? So let me check if the pod is up and running fine. So how do I do that? We can do kubectl get pod, okay? I, this is the extra command, but I'm gonna show you for this. Okay, so kubectl, um, okay, so let me copy this quickly and I will show you like, no, pod is up and running fine. Yeah, so get pod. Here you go, right? So if you see here, so there are two parts are being hosted, two parts are being deployed as part of this application and both are running. That is what I wanted to show you. The next command is, you know, next command is, you know, it's it's to the point, okay? Let's access the application with using endpoints. That is URL. Okay, so maybe I need to recopy again. It didn't copy. Let me copy this command. And yes, this is error. You can ignore this error. Anyways, this is nothing to do with our, this one. And let me run this command. So this command will retrieve the endpoints of my service, nothing but the application which I hosted on the EKS cluster, okay? Now let's access the application with using this command, okay? So now the since the pods are up and running fine, we should be able to access this application from the internet. So I will go here and, 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 and let me paste that command and let me run this, okay? This is nothing but, you know, it's an ELB endpoint, okay? So through which we can access the application. Here you go, right? User blog is up and running fine, okay? Nothing but, you know, our EKS cluster workloads are being hosted now. And one more thing is we can access the admin part of this WordPress application. How do I do that? So for that case, I need to do append the admin at the end. Okay, so if I can do the append at the admin, it will take me to the admin page. As this message said us, you know, to access the admin page, we have to use the username called user. And we have to get the password by running this command in the, in the form of base64, uh, you know, uh, uh, coding. So let me get that encoded password, then we can decode from the internet and, and use it. Here you go, so this is the encoded password. So let me copy this. And I go to this one, base64, this is the online, okay, this is online portal, let me put this. Yeah, and, 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 and let me decode this. So decoded password, the, 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 if I put this password, it will not work because that is enco encoded one, so this is the decoded one. So decoded is the password, actual password we need to put in here. So I decoded from the internet and I'm gonna log in now. If I click on the login, it should allow me to log in, okay? Yeah, so here you go. So we are successfully logged into our WordPress application as an admin and you see the post. It's it's a blogging application in general, okay? So yeah, all right. Now um, we are pretty much done with the you know, application side. Now the time to how do I, so now what we, where are we now? So we are here, we are hosted now. Now the time to do the rest of setup, like you know, how do we configure the you know, uh, the the uh, the you know configurations in a such a way that you know the the logs gets retrieved from the EKS cluster, pushed into the you know CloudWatch container insights, and then we see the insights. Okay, that is a core part of our demo. Yeah, all right. Now we go to the next part. So the next part is you know actually you know create a container insights. So for that case, I don't need to run this uh, uh, get nodes. Okay, the yeah, nodes is important because you know we're gonna retrieve the informations about the nodes, right? So let's see the status of the nodes first. Here you go, the nodes is, uh, is ready and then nothing but it is running, yeah? Now let's go to the next command, see what we need to do. The next command is, you know, we need to get the role of our EKS cluster, okay? That is very, very important thing. Why we need to get the role in the sense, we're gonna retrieve the role and we're gonna add some, some, some more permissions, okay? So that, you know, it can do the, it can help us in uh, achieving the container, cloud watch and sites, all right? So for that case, what I need to do is I need to get the stack name of my, you know, my uh, node. How do I do that? So this is the command, which is peculiar one. Okay, so that is ekctl get node group. And this is my EKS cluster and get the output in the form of JSON. So in this JSON, we're gonna get, you now we're gonna get the stack name. So I need to get the stack name and then get the role name, yeah. So here you go. So what is the my stack name? So the stack name is, this is my stack name. And now from here, I can get the role name. So if I need to get the role name, so let's do that. So the syntax is something like this, okay? Just follow whatever I am suggesting here. So AWS, so I'm using the CLI now, okay? So earlier I used a Q EKCTL. Now I'm using AWS CLI, that is AWS CloudFormation, describe the stack with a name, 
this isn't my stack name yeah so let me copy the stack name and put it here okay so if i put it here all right so here you go so so this output should give me some hint about what was the role you know that has been attached to the node group okay so if i show you so this is the role if i okay so this will be the role name being attached to my aws eks cluster node group so what i do is i go to the im and i can find if i can find that role okay so if i can find this role um okay it should be there here you go right so the role is been so the role is been appearing in the im service this is identity and access management you know service so where we can find the role yeah all right so pretty much uh, we are done with the with with the this step so let's go to the next step so what is the next step so we got to know that you know what is our you know the 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 role name so now it is time to add the necessary policy to this im role why because you know we need to do the you know container insights right with uh, and, and that insert need to be forwarded to the aws cloudwatch for that we need to leverage the permissions to this role for this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to you know add this role again so which i copied there so this is my new role so let me put this and i will replace this with this role as well yeah all right and then here we're going to attach an extra policy to that role okay so that is what this command does i'm going to explain you here all right so let me copy this and and run this command so here i'm using the aws cli command that is aws im attach policy and this is my role name which i showed you and ern this is the my policy ern which needs to be attached if i can show you this role currently it does not has you know it does not has that policies yeah and we're going to add some extra permissions that is what okay so if you see here right so that policy is not been attached here so that is cloudwatch agent server policy cloudwatch agent server policy is not there now i going to attach that now so let's do that by running this aws cli command here you go it is very quick and if i refresh here so we should see one fifth policy been attached here you go the fifth policy has been attached and the agent server policy is attached now all right okay so we are good now we have attached the required policy as well so if you want you can you know view that um, uh, view that again by running this command so let me show you that as well so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to extract the role and list all the policies attached to that role with using aws cli command so how do i do that so this is the command which can help me that so let me run this command yeah so whatever i have seen in the in here so that's the thing that is getting displayed here yeah all right so let's go to the next one so next one is the actual core thing that is what i was waiting for so this is a kubectl apply hyphen f so what is the thing that i'm applying f in the sense we are deploying something on our eks cluster again what is that going to do so it's going to create a namespace called amazon cloudwatch okay amazon hyphen cloudwatch and it creates a necessary security objects for the demonstration because you know this yaml file by deploying this yaml file or specification file i'm going to create a, a, you know a, a, you know a security objects for the demonstration because you know i'm going to deploy uh fluent d as a demon set okay all right so for that case you know uh, the objects like security account cluster role cluster role binding so all these configurations will be done by this yaml file okay and it finally deploys a cloud watch agent fluent d configurations and cloud map you know cloud config map configurations okay so these are the this much task are been performed by this you know enable container inside specification file now let me quickly walk you through this you know file as well so here if i show you i'm going to create a, a, a you know namespace called amazon cloudwatch then we are we are creating the service account yeah let's go one by one by one okay so next one is we are creating a you know uh, 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 you know the, the the cluster role and with these permissions okay and then uh, we are doing the role binding to above role is getting binded now yeah so anyways this file will be shared maybe you can look it in a deeper way so this is the config map i'm defining yeah and if we go down so here you know we are declaring the daemon set okay that is a cloud watch as a daemon set okay we are deploying the cloud watch agent as a daemon set yeah all right so the next one is you know we are uh, again you know we are using the uh, a cluster info yeah all right so this is the again uh, uh, a cluster info that this is a config map where we are you know declaring the cluster info data nothing but we are keeping the cluster name and reason name okay? so this is my cluster name and this is my reason name okay so this is the in my case maybe in your case maybe you need to change the cluster name and the reason yeah and finally we are creating the service account again uh, then we have the cluster role uh, then the role binding so multiple time we are doing those yeah 
And finally, we are doing the config map again. So this is big config map, okay? So in this config map, we are doing multiple uh, container configs, so you will be fluent configurations, system configurations, host configurations, okay? And finally, we are you know, hosting the you know, FluentD services, okay? Uh, the FluentD, uh, you know, yeah, okay, so if you see it, FluentD for CloudWatch, okay, so that is the, you know, the image name, which is being, you know, uh, deployed on the EKS cluster as a daemon set, yeah, all right. Okay, so this is the final configuration so that we are doing. So this is pretty long, you know, very difficult to explain in, in, in one go. Maybe I will share this, uh, you know, complete YAML file in the GitHub repo and the GitHub repo link will be shared in video's description, okay? Maybe you can go in deeper from there. Okay, so now the time to run this command that is uh, uh, specification file. So I will go to this uh, uh, this path. I need to CD, okay, because or else you know the command will throw the error, okay? That's the reason I'm doing this. And then I'm gonna run this command. So where is the command? So this is the command I'm gonna run now. All right, so this is the command, yeah? And uh, let me run this, yeah? Actually, it, it, what, what is the, so, the, so whatever the configurations I have walked through you, so whatever the configurations I have walked from here, yeah? So all those deployments will be done now here, right? So there are so many configurations that deployed within no minute of time, okay? So if you see here, it has created a namespace, service account, yeah? Uh, a cluster role or cluster role binding, config map, daemon set, config map, service account, cluster role binding, again daemon set for the FluentD, right? So it has done these many tasks within no minute of time, okay? So that is the power of, you know, uh, EKS or, you know, container specification file. All right, so we are now pretty much on, on you know, on all the configurations that we are done. Now it is time to see the logs if getting forwarded into the CloudWatch or not, okay? So for that case, let me open, let me see the last, you know, lastly, let me see the status of the demand sets, okay? So let me open that and see the, what is the status of our demand sets, yeah? So if you see here, so we have hosted two daemon sets. One is a CloudWatch agent, and the other one is the FluentD configurations, okay? All right, so we are pretty much on top of this one. So now let's go to the, uh, so we have done all the commandlet configurations that we need to do. Now it is time to go and see the CloudWatch log groups, okay? So if I go to the CloudWatch logs, so I'm refreshing the again. So this is my CloudWatch, and I'm in the Mumbai region, okay? Make sure that, you know, you are sitting in the same region as as you know as the uh, you know as your eks cluster okay my eks cluster in the mumbai region and uh, i'm also sitting in the same region as well yeah all right so if i go to the logs and go to the log insights uh, maybe log groups yeah first one let's see the log groups if the logs groups are been populated yeah so what is our eks uh, insights okay if i go to the eks insights here you go right so we have so many you know logs have been populated here right so if i see here Maybe, maybe, maybe let's filter with our you know, cluster name. So if I can go ahead and find out our cluster name, this is EKS Insights, and we should see some log groups being populated here. And then that, those logs group can be used for you know log insights purpose. Here it goes. So when is the performance is coming, host, data plane, and application is also coming. So this is very, you know, very important one, uh, which can be you know, used at the container insights. Okay, if I go and show you, so this is the, you know, uh, servers, Metrics, okay, so this is this is the server being you know, targeted for the metric filter. So if I go to the metric filter, all right. No worries, so let's go to the container insights, okay. If I go to the container insights, so generally it takes certain time to replicate uh, and in some cases, okay. So let's go to the uh, container insights. So, okay, we should see some graph here generally, right? Here you go, the graphs are getting, you know, appeared. So if I can go back to the uh, one hour or go to the custom and uh, go for the 30 minutes, yeah, or four minutes back, yeah maybe five minutes back okay so then then we do apply all right so um, eks insight so here you go right you are seeing the graph getting you know you know getting applied here okay that is what we wanted right so if i go here and uh, we see some graphs okay nothing but no so what does this actually means in the sense you are visualizing what is happening in your eks cluster at component by component like eks service eks nodes eks cluster okay so this is eks service level you can see the no CPU usage, okay, so services is nothing but, you know, our workspace service, cube system service, yeah. And similarly in the memory, you know, like per services, you can see the memory consumption, network utilizations, pod utilizations, you know, number of ports, yeah. So this is very fantastic, you know, this is very fantastic feature that AWS, you know, CloudWatch provides us, you know, to visualize, you know, your performance insights of your, you know, EKS, 
you know, container workloads, okay? So if I go to the nodes, in the nodes as well, we can see the data as well, yeah? All right, so at the node level, you can also visualize the data, yeah? Along with that, you can also have the further data from the, you know, log group insights as well. So if you go to the log insights, yeah? So from the log insights, so let's say, you know, you, your container insight is not enough. Again, you can go ahead and, and you know, uh, do more insights at the performance level as well. So if I can select this and then run the query, here you can visualize again, yeah? So if I can show you, so visualize here, right? Land graph, maybe run query, yeah? And logs. So whatever the logs that you can see here, okay? And that is what we can, you know, that is what we are seeing in the form of graph, okay? Which is very easy to understand in general, okay? So if I can show you finally, all right, so we are here and we are in the EKS cluster and the, this is our cluster name, right? That is EKS insight, okay? And finally, we are here. So we can see the graph, you know, getting visualized and nothing but the data from, so let me go back to the picture here. So, so from this EKS cluster, uh, the whatever happening on the your EKS cluster getting populated to the AWS CloudWatch insight, okay? All right, so that's all I need to show you in this video. Um, uh, thank you very much for watching my videos. A kind request, please do subscribe my channel. That would really encourage me a lot, yeah? So with that note, thank you. Thanks a lot.